I've spent countless hours contemplating what brings true happiness to our lives. And I've noticed something fascinating, uh, something that changed everything for me, and I believe it will change everything for you too. A butterfly struggling to break free from its cocoon. A well-meaning observer, seeing this struggle, decides to help by cutting open the cocoon. But what happens next is tragic. The butterfly never develops the strength to flee. That struggle, that very resistance we often try to avoid, is exactly what gives the butterfly its ability to soar. How many of you have held onto relationships that no longer serve your highest good? You keep thinking that maybe, just maybe, if you try harder, love more deeply, or change yourself enough, everything will fall into place. But let me share something profound with you. Your happiness isn't found in changing others or yourself to fit someone else's expectations. It's found in the courage to be authentically you. In my years of counseling thousands of people, I've witnessed a recurring pattern. We often chase happiness in the shadows of other people's approval. We measure our worth through their eyes, their words, their presence in our lives. But here's the liberating truth. You were born complete. You arrived on this earth as a perfect expression of divine love, carrying within you everything you need to live a life of joy and purpose. The same force that makes the flowers bloom, that keeps the planets in orbit, that orchestrates the entire universe, that same force flows through you. How can you possibly be incomplete? How can your happiness depend on someone else's presence in your life? Let me tell you about a profound experience I had back in 2010. I was walking along the beach at sunrise, wrestling with some deep personal challenges. I felt abandoned by someone I deeply cared about and the pain was overwhelming. As I watched the sunrise over the horizon, painting the sky in brilliant shades of orange and pink, a powerful realization washed over me like the gentle waves at my feet. The sun doesn't need permission to shine. It doesn't dim its light because some clouds pass by. It doesn't negotiate its brilliance with the darkness. That morning, I understood that true happiness isn't something we find, it's something we allow ourselves to be. Just like the sun doesn't need permission to shine, you don't need anyone's permission to be happy. Your joy is your birthright. Have you ever noticed how young children play? They don't need someone's approval to laugh, to dance, to express their joy. They haven't yet learned to condition their happiness on external factors. When did we lose this natural state of being? When did we start believing that our happiness needs to be earned, validated, or dependent on others? The truth is, the people who walk away from your life are not taking your happiness with them, unless you've made the mistake of giving them that power. Your happiness isn't a shared account that others can withdraw from. It's an unlimited wellspring within you. Waiting to be acknowledged and expressed, often share this powerful metaphor. Imagine your life as a magnificent garden. You are the master gardener. Every thought you think, every belief you hold, every person you allow into your space, these are either nurturing your garden or depleting it. When someone walks away from your garden, don't chase after them with your watering can. Instead, turn your attention to nurturing what remains and planting new seeds of possibility. Now, this doesn't mean you won't feel pain when relationships end. Pain is a natural part of the human experience. But suffering, that's optional. Suffering comes from the stories we tell ourselves about what that pain means. I'm not enough. I'll never be happy again. I need them to be complete. These are all stories, and like all stories, they can be rewritten. Here's a powerful truth that transformed my understanding of relationships. People come into your life for a reason, a season, or a lifetime. Not everyone is meant to stay forever, and that's perfectly okay. Each person who enters your life brings a lesson, a gift, an opportunity for growth. When they leave, they're not taking away your chance at happiness. They're actually creating space for something even more aligned with your highest good. Remember, the goal isn't to make others regret leaving you. The goal is to be so deeply connected to your own joy that their absence becomes irrelevant to your happiness. When you reach this state of being, something magical happens. People start wondering how you can be so happy without them. But by then, you'll be too busy living your best life to notice their wondering. You know what fascinates me most about human behavior? Our incredible capacity to grow stronger through adversity, 
When someone walks away from your life, it's not the end, it's an invitation to discover your own magnificence. Let me share something profound that I learned during my own journey of self-discovery. Back in 1974, I was facing one of the darkest periods of my life. My marriage had ended, my career seemed uncertain, and I felt completely lost. One evening, sitting alone in my apartment, I had what I now call my awakening moment. I realized that I'd been living my life as if happiness was something that existed outside of myself, in other people's approval, in relationships, in a change. But that evening, I understood something that would forever change my perspective. Happiness is not something you pursue. It's something you allow. Think about water for a moment. When water is still, it naturally becomes clear. You don't have to do anything to make it clear. You just have to stop disturbing it. Your natural state is joy. Your natural state is peace. Your natural state is abundance. Uh, the only thing preventing you from experiencing these qualities is your resistance to them. When people leave your life, they're not taking your capacity for happiness with them. They're actually giving you an incredible gift, the opportunity to rediscover your inherent wholeness. But here's the key. You must be willing to embrace this gift. You must be willing to stand in your own light. I remember counseling a gentleman in 2012 who had spent three years trying to win back his ex-wife. He had put his entire life on hold, convinced that he couldn't be happy without her. What if the purpose of this separation isn't to teach you how to get her back, but to show you who you are without her? That question changed everything for him. Within six months, he had started his own business, rekindled old friendships, and found a joy he never knew existed within him. The people who walk away from your life are your greatest teachers. They're not rejecting you. They're redirecting you. Every person who leaves creates space for something new to enter. But most of us make the mistake of staring at the closed door for so long that we miss seeing the windows of opportunity opening all around us. Let me share with you seven powerful principles that will transform how you handle people leaving your life. Understand that your worth is not determined by someone else's inability to see it. Just as the sun doesn't need permission to shine, you don't need anyone's validation to be worthy of love and happiness. Psychonize that resistance to what is create suffering. The moment you fully accept where you are, you free yourself to move forward. Stop fighting against reality. What has happened, your power lies in how you choose to respond. Take responsibility for your own happiness. This doesn't mean you won't feel pain or disappointment. It means you won't make these feelings someone else's fault. Your emotional state is your responsibility. No one else's. Practice radical self-love. When someone leaves, don't turn their absence into self-hatred. Instead, use it as an opportunity to deepen your relationship with yourself. What would you do differently if you truly loved yourself unconditionally? Embrace the power of surrender. Not as defeat, but as a conscious choice to stop fighting against the natural flow of life. When you surrender to what is, you open yourself to infinite possibilities. So understand that happiness is your natural state. You don't need to create it or find it. You just need to stop blocking it. Every time you tell yourself you can't be happy without someone, you're placing barriers between yourself and your natural joy. It's live from your highest self. Your highest self knows that every ending is also a beginning. It knows that your worth isn't determined by who stays or who leaves. It knows that you are complete, whole, and perfect exactly as you are. Now, let me tell you about an exercise that has helped thousands of people transform their perspective on happiness. I call it the gratitude mirror. Every morning, stand in front of a mirror, look into your own eyes, and say these words. I thank you for this day. Thank you for this life. Thank you for the strength within me. I choose happiness. I choose peace. I choose love. At first, this might feel uncomfortable or even silly. But remember, everything feels unnatural until it becomes natural. The more you practice this, the more you'll begin to feel an unshakable connection to your own inner source of joy. Think about the last time someone left your life. Remember the pain, the confusion, the sense of loss. Now imagine viewing that same situation from a higher perspective. What if their leaving wasn't a rejection, but a redirection? What if it wasn't about your unworthiness, but about your growth? What if the universe wasn't punishing you, but preparing you for something better? 
in my decades of working with people, I've noticed a fascinating pattern. Those who learn to find happiness within themselves invariably attract more positive relationships into their lives. It's as if the universe responds to their inner state of joy by bringing them experiences that match that vibration. But here's the crucial part. You can't fake this. You can't pretend to be happy just to make others regret leaving you. This isn't about revenge or showing off. It's about genuinely discovering that your happiness is an inside job. When you truly understand this, something magical happens. Uh, people start wondering how you can be so happy without them. But by then, you'll be too focused on living your best life to even notice their wondering. I want to address something that many of us struggle with, the constant need to check on those who've left our lives. The social media stalking, the late night phone scrolling, the asking mutual friends for updates. This behavior is a form of self-harm. Every time you check their social media, every time you ask about them, you're reopening a wound that's trying to heal. Back in 2008, before social media became what it is today. I noticed how technology was creating new ways for us to torture ourselves over past relationships. Think about it. We now have countless ways to peek into the lives of people who are no longer part of our journey. But just because we can, doesn't mean we should. Every time you choose to focus on someone who's left, you're choosing to neglect someone who's present, including yourself. Every moment spent wondering about their life is a moment stolen from creating your own extraordinary life. Let me share a technique I developed called the future self meditation. Close your eyes for a moment. Imagine yourself five years from now, radiating joy, success, and inner peace. This version of you has completely moved on, has created an amazing life, and is genuinely happy. Now ask your future self what advice they would give you today. What would they tell you about this period of your life? What wisdom would they share about letting go? Most people who come to my seminars are surprised when I tell them that letting go isn't about forgetting, it's about growing. It's about taking the lessons and leaving the pain behind. Every person who leaves your life offers you a graduate degree in personal growth, if you're willing to see it that way. When you're truly happy, you don't have time to make others wonder about your happiness. You're too busy living it. The paradox is beautiful. The less you try to prove your happiness to others, the more genuine and visible it becomes. I remember meeting a woman in Detroit in 2014 who had spent years trying to prove to her ex-husband that she was better off without him. She carefully curated her social media, orchestrated situations where they would run into each other, and constantly worked to show him how great her life was. But here's what she eventually realized. All that energy spent trying to prove her happiness was actually preventing her from being truly happy. Let me share with you what I call the four agreements of moving forward. I agree to focus on my growth rather than their absence. I agree to measure my progress by my peace, not their regret. I agree to choose joy in this moment, regardless of what anyone else is doing. I agree to trust that everything is unfolding for my highest good. These agreements aren't just words. They're commitments to yourself. They're declarations of your independence from other people's opinions and choices. Happy people don't need to announce their happiness. They don't need to prove it. They simply live it. When you're genuinely happy, it shows in the way you carry yourself, in the energy you bring to a room, in the authentic smile that reaches your eyes. Think about the ocean for a moment. The surface might be turbulent, with waves crashing and storms raging, but deep beneath the surface, there's a profound stillness. Your inner peace should be like that, unshakable, regardless of what's happening on the surface of your life. I want you to understand something crucial about happiness. It's not a destination you reach once everything in your life is perfect. It's a way of traveling. It's, a, it's choosing to find joy in the journey, even when the path isn't what you expected. Some of you might be thinking, but Wayne, you don't understand how much this person meant to me. I do understand I understand the depth of human connection, the pain of loss, the struggle to let go. But I also understand something even more important. Your capacity for joy is limitless, and it's not tied to any person, place, or circumstance. Every great achievement in human history began with someone letting go of something. 
letting go of fear, letting go of comfort, letting go of limitations. Your greatest achievements will come from your ability to let go of what's no longer serving you. Here's what I want you to try. For the next 30 days, commit to not checking on those who've left your life. No social media stalking, no asking mutual friends, no late nights scrolling through old messages. It said, invest that energy in yourself. Every time you feel the urge to check on them, do something for your own growth instead. Write in your journal. Read a book that expands your mind. Take a walk in nature. Call someone who genuinely supports your growth. Create something. Learn something new. The key is to redirect that energy into your own development. The quality of your life is directly proportional to the amount of uncertainty you can comfortably live with. When someone leaves, there's often a desperate need to know, know why they left, know what they're doing, know if they're happy, know if they miss you. But true growth comes from learning to be at peace with not knowing. I want to address something that many of us struggle with the constant need to check on those who've left our lives. The social media stalking, the late night phone scrolling, the asking mutual friends for updates. This behavior is a form of self-harm. Every time you check their social media, every time you ask about them, you're reopening a wound that's trying to heal. Back in 2008, before social media became what it is today, I noticed how technology was creating new ways for us to torture ourselves over past relationships. Think about it. We now have countless ways to peek into the lives of people who are no longer part of our journey. But just because we can, doesn't mean we should. It's a powerful truth. Every time you choose to focus on someone who's left, you're choosing to neglect someone who's present, including yourself. Every moment spent wondering about their life is a moment stolen from creating your own extraordinary life. Let me share a technique I developed called the Future Self Meditation. Close your eyes for a moment. Imagine yourself five years from now, radiating joy, success, and inner peace. This version of you has completely moved on, has created an amazing life, and is genuinely happy. Now ask your future self what advice they would give you today. What would they tell you about this period of your life? What wisdom would they share about letting go? Most people who come to my seminars are surprised when I tell them that letting go isn't about forgetting. It's about growing. It's about taking the lessons and leaving the pain behind. Every person who leaves your life offers you a graduate degree in personal growth, if you're willing to see it that way. When you're truly happy, you don't have time to make others wonder about your happiness. You're too busy living it. The paradox is beautiful. The less you try to prove your happiness to others, the more genuine and visible it becomes. I remember meeting a woman in Detroit in 2014 who had spent years trying to prove to her ex-husband that she was better off without him. She carefully curated her social media, orchestrated situations where they would run into each other, and constantly worked to show him how great her life was. But here's what she eventually realized. All that energy spent trying to prove her happiness was actually preventing her from being truly happy. Let me share with you what I call the four agreements of moving forward. I agree to focus on my growth rather than their absence. I agree to measure my progress by my peace, not their regret. I agree to choose joy in this moment, regardless of what anyone else is doing. I agree to trust that everything is unfolding for my highest good. These agreements aren't just words. They're commitments to yourself. They're declarations of your independence from other people's opinions and choices. Happy people don't need to announce their happiness. They don't need to prove it. They simply live it. When you're genuinely happy, it shows in the way you carry yourself, in the energy you bring to a room, in the authentic smile that reaches your eyes. Think about the ocean for a moment. The surface might be turbulent with waves crashing and storms raging, but deep beneath the surface, there's a profound stillness. Your inner peace should be like that, unshakable, regardless of what's happening on the surface of your life. I want you to understand something crucial about happiness. It's not a destination you reach once everything in your life is perfect. It's a way of traveling. It's choosing to find joy in the journey, even when the path isn't what you expected. Some of you might be thinking, but Wayne, you don't understand how much this person meant to me. I do understand. I understand the depth of human connection, the pain of loss, the struggle to let go. 
But I also understand something even more important. Your capacity for joy is limitless, and it's not tied to any person, place, or circumstance. Every great achievement in human history began with someone letting go of something. Letting go of fear, letting go of comfort, letting go of limitations. Your greatest achievements will come from your ability to let go of what's no longer serving you. For the next 30 days, commit to not checking on those who've left your life. No social media stalking, no asking mutual friends, no late nights scrolling through old messages. Instead, invest that energy in yourself. Every time you feel the urge to check on them, do something for your own growth instead. Write in your journal. Read a book that expands your mind. Take a walk in nature. Call someone who genuinely supports your growth. Create something. Learn something new. The key is to redirect that energy into your own development. The quality of your life is directly proportional to the amount of uncertainty you can comfortably live with. When someone leaves, there's often a desperate need to know. Know why they left, know what they're doing, know if they're happy, know if they miss you. But true growth comes from learning to be at peace with not knowing. Your happiness has nothing to do with impressing others and everything to do with expressing your authentic self. Let's talk about what genuine happiness looks like when it's not performative. In my counseling practice, I noticed how many people confuse happiness with the appearance of happiness. They post perfectly curated photos, share inspirational quotes, and try to convince everyone, including themselves, but true happiness doesn't need an audience. Here's what real happiness looks. It's waking up with a sense of purpose that has nothing to do with anyone else's approval. It's finding joy in small moments, a cup of coffee at sunrise, a good book, a moment of silence. It's being at peace with your own company. Most importantly, it's not needing to document or broadcast your joy to prove it exists. Let me share a powerful realization I had in 2013 while teaching in India. I met a monk who owned nothing but his robes and a bowl, yet his face radiated pure joy. When I asked him his secret, he said something I'll never forget. I am happy because I have let go of needing reasons to be happy. Think about that for a moment. How many of us have conditioned our happiness on external circumstances? I'll be happy when they come back. I'll be happy when they regret leaving. I'll be happy when I find someone better. These are all conditions that keep us from experiencing the joy available to us right now. Here's what I want you to understand about letting go. Letting go is not about erasing memories or pretending you were never hurt. It's about releasing your attachment to how things should have been. It's about accepting that sometimes people leave and that's okay. Most importantly, it's about choosing yourself. When you truly choose yourself, something remarkable happens. Your energy shifts, your vibration changes, people start noticing a difference in you, not because you're trying to show them, but because you're genuinely transformed. In 2014, I worked with a group of people going through difficult divorces. One participant said something profound. The day I stopped trying to make them sorry for leaving was the day I started actually living again. This is the essence of what we're discussing today. Here are practical steps to cultivate genuine happiness. Start each day with intention Rather than checking your phone, develop new skills that have nothing to do with impressing others. Create a life so full of meaning that you don't have time to worry about who's watching. Practice radical acceptance of the present moment. Build relationships with people who celebrate your growth rather than remind you of your past. The universe responds to authenticity. When you're genuinely happy, not performing happiness, you naturally attract more reasons to be happy. It's like a spiritual law of attraction, but it only works when it's real. I want to share a powerful visualization exercise. Imagine your happiness as a garden. Every thought, every action, every choice is either planting seeds or pulling weeds. When you focus on those who've left, you're essentially pouring your precious water into someone else's garden. Instead, direct that energy toward nurturing your own growth. The most powerful message you can send to someone who's left is not through words, or actions designed to show them what they're missing is through your genuine transformation, a transformation so complete that by the time they notice, their opinion no longer matters to you. This is the ultimate paradox of happiness after loss. The less you need others to see your joy, the more visible it becomes. 
The less you try to prove you're better off without them, the more evident it becomes that you are. Stipend today is simple but profound. Stop performing your healing for an audience. Start living it for yourself. The world will catch up to your transformation when you're ready, but by then, you'll be too engaged in your own beautiful life to care who's watching. Let me share what I believe is the most important truth about happiness. It's not the absence of pain, but the presence of purpose. When you have real purpose, other people's presence or absence becomes secondary to your mission. In 2015, during one of my last seminars, a participant asked me, how do I stop caring what they think? My answer was simple. Start caring more about what you're here to do. When you're aligned with your purpose, others' opinions naturally fade into the background. Here are the final transformative principles I want to leave you. Healing happens in silence, not on social media. Your worth is not measured by who stays or leaves. Every ending is a gateway to a new beginning. The best response to absence is presence in your own life. Genuine happiness is quiet, steady, and needs no audience. Remember that butterfly we talked about at the beginning? There's more to its story. After it emerges from the cocoon, it doesn't fly back to prove anything to the cocoon. It simply spreads its wings and embraces its new reality. Your task now is not to make others wonder about your happiness. Your task is to be so genuinely immersed in your own growth that you don't have time to wonder who's wondering about you. As we conclude, I want you to make a sacred commitment to yourself. I commit to being unapologetically happy, not to impress others, but to express my true nature. I understand that my joy is my responsibility and I choose it not because someone left, but because I stayed true to myself I release the need to prove my worth to those who couldn't see it. And I embrace the freedom to be authentically me. This is your moment. This is your transformation. This is your rebirth. Your happiness is waiting. Not in someone else's approval. Not in their regret. Not in their wondering. But right here, right now, in your decision to choose yourself. Thank you for allowing me to share these truths with you. Remember, you don't need anyone's permission to shine. You just need to stop asking for it.